Guam Quabbin Regional High School in Barrie, Massachusetts. Charter Communications and Charter TV3 present live coverage of Central Mass High School basketball. Tonight, it is a top 10 matchup and a great one at that as the Quabbin Panthers welcome in the St. Peter Marion Guardians. Hello, everyone. Welcome inside the gymnasium. Kevin Shea alongside of Kevin Wells. Great game for many different reasons. For Quabbin, they are the number one seed in the large school division of the Clark Tournament which will kick off later this week. This is a huge test for them, taking on St. Peter Marion, who's one of the best teams in Central Mass and has played some of the best teams in the state. No question about it. You know, Marcus Watson has done a great job with the SPM team. They're gonna really get after it tonight. So Dennis Dextrader and Quabbin are gonna have to make sure that they value the basketball. There's gonna be a lot of pressure. But again, Quabbin, as they start to get ready for that Clark tournament, this is a key matchup. So this is a great springboard, Kevin, going into postseason play. So both teams are looking to really make some headway tonight. So buckle up, as I always say, because we're going at it. This is going to be a track meet. It's going to be fun. It is Quabbin and St. Peter Marion. We're back with the opening tip-off right after this. What's up? I'm Tom, and this is Two Things with Tom. Thing number one, Worcester Railers hockey is family fun. Bring the family and have a blast at the DCU Center in Worcester. Thing number two, Worcester Railers hockey is wicked affordable. Railers tickets start at just $15. Enjoy a great night out with your family or friends. Hockey is back. Hockey is back in Worcester. Give us a call, go to railershc.com and come see us at the rink. I'm District Attorney Joe Worley, and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. You never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade, take a stand to lend a hand, don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Local news from Central Massachusetts for Central Massachusetts. A Webster man is arrested after police say he stole numerous manhole covers. At least eight cars caught fire tonight at a parking garage. If you hear the same noise in the future, the town says you should evacuate the area. Reporters in the field. And an in-depth local forecast. Worcester News Tonight on Charter TV 3. We're proud to lead with high school sports stories because we know that's important to our viewers, that's important to our communities. I think it's incredibly unique because you just don't see this amount of coverage other places. We can do five and six minutes at 10 o'clock, whereas other stations might do two and a half minutes, and of that, 30 seconds is on high school sports. It's very easy to be enthusiastic watching these guys play, whether it's high school football or field hockey or lacrosse. When you see somebody make an outstanding play, you're kind of fired up about that. I come back and I'm like, Kev, I, I couldn't believe this play I saw in this game. And to see and to kind of be able to capture some of those magic moments when you're there to witness history, that's really cool. We're out there every day shooting the games ourselves and coming back and editing it and writing it ourselves. You get a certain insight that you don't get if you're, say, in a press box. We never forget the players that come from Central Mass, those that are lucky enough to play professional sports. We follow them in the pros. We never forget those guys coming from Central Mass. I've had people come up and say to me that, you know, we still watch and we're still fans because they can watch on TV. Has it brought fans to the game? Has it impacted local sports? I hope so. Coaches tell us it has. Certainly our goal is just to, just to cover the game and to really highlight the positive of, of high school and, and local college sports. And we're enjoying what we do, and that I hope that comes across. There's no other place I'd rather be, and there's no other job I'd rather do. And welcome back, everyone. Dennis Dextrader, the head coach of the Quabbin Panthers. And Quabbin having themselves a fine season 14 and 3 this year. And there is Coach Watson, Marcus Watson, the head coach of St. Peter Marion. And boy, he's got another phenomenal team and does another phenomenal job with his squad. And this is a team in St. Peter Marion, 12 and 4 overall. They just they lost to Central Catholic in Lawrence. They lost to Catholic Memorial, two of the best teams in the state. They lost a real close one to Doherty. And I think the fourth loss was to St. John's in a close game. I mean, this is a team, and I've seen them play. 
They get after you defensively. They will press full court, trap, get a lot of turnovers, and turn them into points very quickly. And now we get ready for the playing of our national anthem. job by the Anthem Quabbin students singing the National Anthem. The Bleacher Creatures, the Quabbin fans as they are known, out for tonight's game. And out to witness a little history too. Brody Coughlin, a senior, is one point away from his 1,000th career point. He's got 999. Well, Kevin, that is uh, kind of a theme this year, isn't it? Yeah, we've witnessed a lot of history, which is nice. You know, it's cool, and it's cool, great for the kids, too, to, uh, to get it on TV. Travis Lanfer, we'll see, is a phenomenal athlete, a great football player as a wide receiver and a defensive back linebacker. And he's getting a lot of interest here. He's a senior, hasn't decided yet where he's going to go to college, but getting a lot of interest from Assumption College. And... New head coach Andy McKenzie. So we get ready for the jump. Alex Karabin, 6'6, six, six, eighth grader. Yeah, very atypical to have uh, a young man playing at this level, uh, Division I, as an eighth grader. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, he's long and he's got an awful lot of skill for uh, a, a guy that is so young. Well, the other thing that's impressed me with him, Kevin, watching him all season long is, you know, you think a kid who's 6'6 in eighth grade is going to be just a bouncing bag of bones, and he's not going to be a strong kid. He's a strong kid. He's going up against some big centers. Like you mentioned, it's Division I. He's going up against kids that are 17, 18 years old, you know, that have filled out. Yeah, definitely uh, kids that are far more mature physically than he is. Yeah, but he's strong, and he's also fearless. I saw him going at a, a kid who was 6'10", taking it right to him, which I like. You know, you like his attitude. Guabin trying to run with it. Out of bounds. St. Peter Marion will put it in play. The captain, Bobby Letourneau, brings it up for the Guardians. Here's Letourneau. St. Peter shoots the ball well. Here's Karabin, the eighth grader, off the mark, skying up for the rebound. Just couldn't haul it in with Shamar Dennis, a sophomore, who's 6'4". He's a big kid, too. And there is Karabin, the eighth grader, Alex Karabin. You know, and you know, Kevin, in today's day and age, you never know how long. Big swat by Karabin. You never know how long the kids will be at the high school. 
because the, uh, the nature of the game now is if you're a young player and you're really, really good, so often we see them go to a prep school and reclassify. Turnover by Quab, and, but no, you're, you're, you're correct. And, and what essentially has happened is that, uh, you know, now that I'm, I'm at a prep school right, at so Putnam you're Science advocate Academy. For that. No, not at all. But I think when a lot of high school coaches, believe it or not, call us, and uh, they want the opportunity for their their players to play against the best, and not the best in the area, but the best in the country. Right. So they try to get them to prep schools uh, when the opportunity presents itself. And a good rebound cleared by Palmer, and. Brody Coughlin. Well, St. Peter well, Marion. You're, you're talking about a team, too, where you are at Putnam Science Academy uh, that is ranked in the country, you know, top 10 in the country, top five in the country. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's provided me the opportunity to see a level of basketball. I mean, kids that are going to, for example, uh, Hamadou Diallo, who is now at Kentucky, is probably going to go to the NBA this year. He's a freshman at Kentucky, played at Putnam last year. Travel. Colby Smith, an outstanding football player, just a great athlete, driving to the hoop for Quabbin. But he's a player that the Panthers football team is going to be leaning on heavily this coming fall. Smith, outstanding football player, and he's going man to man with Bobby Letourno. Both teams trying to find their way here, struggling a little bit to put the ball through the cylinder. St. Peter's getting a lot of good looks at the iron, they just can't get it to drop through. Yeah, nice job by Croy Jenkins. He's a 6'3 sophomore playing Karabin, but you always talk about side fronting, and that's what he was doing. He's trying to deny the basketball. There's a lid on the basket right now. This is incredible. Well, St. Peter's with a big offensive rebound. There you go. Karabin, and, and he draws the foul. Kobe Smith will be whistled for the infraction. You know, again, you're talking an eighth grader here, takes it hard to the basket. He's right-handed, he takes it with his left hand. You know, you got, uh, let's understand, uh, most eighth graders are in junior high school. Yes. So here he is, not only playing in high school, but he's playing at the Division I, you know, level. So uh, kudos to him, K kudos to uh, Marcus Watson and their program. But uh, again, St. Peter's is a tough, tough, formidable opponent. Yeah, Karabin hits them both. He's a good player. I mean, you watch him, he's just very, he's just a smart player, he's a good player. And I love that he's aggressive. He's an aggressive player. He doesn't back down from players. Up off the iron from Lanford. Help his and here's, yeah, this is what we see. Bobby Letourneau can't finish, oh. Dennis is there. Karabin, the offensive rebound. Well, just a relentless attack of the boards. Racehorse basketball, St. Peter got the rebound on the defensive end, kicked it, and off they went trying to get as many freebies as they can. 4-0, the Guardians. Well, this is one of the things that I know Dennis Dextrader was saying, that one of the things we have to deal with is the pressure that St. Peter's will put on us defensively. How will we handle the pressure? How will we handle the press? We don't really have a true point guard, per se. And then how will we handle the length of St. Peter's? Deep three, in and out, off the fingertips of Quion Sneed. It will be very interesting to uh, see from our statistician extraordinaire, Mr. Robo, uh, how many shot attempts St. Peter's has. We're just about five minutes remaining in the first quarter, so we've spent three minutes of the ball game and uh, guarantee that they have hoisted a large number already. Yeah, you're right. No, you got to think it's already double figures at least. Here's that pressure that uh, St. Pete's will throw at you. They'll go zone press back to a man to man. They'll go zone press back to a zone. Uh, they mix it up, but both teams right now playing a man-to-man. -man. Lanford stays with it, up fake, knocked away, and it will be St. Peter Marion basketball. Fourth turnover of the ball game for the Panthers, and now Dennis Dextrader is going to go to his bench. Another one of those football players coming in, Jake Robidoux, who's a starter as well, 6'3", and he provides some toughness for the team and some length. Well, you talk about veterans. We have two veteran officials tonight. We have Craig Dott and uh, Billy Kamaski. Uh, both do an outstanding job, so uh, both teams could be in better hands. There's Jeff Sullivan for Robin. 
With five on the shot clock and traveled with the ball. Good defense, good team defense. Robidoux there getting help from Jim Korzik. Well, and if you watch Quab, and actually if you watch St. Peter's as well, both of these teams, when your man does not have the ball, you think paint. Coaches te are teaching them, get yourself into paint, look to help. So if you're weak side, that means that you're help side. Here it is, and there it is. 1,000 career points for Brody Coughlin. Coughlin oh. making Quabbin history, and his classmates and his teammates letting him know that they appreciate the milestone. Oh. Brody Coughlin eclipsing the 1,000 point plateau. Pretty exciting. Now, and what support from his uh, his school, you know, the, holding his picture up, Kevin, and uh, just the excitement in the gymnasium, you know. It's a milestone that not a lot of players are able to reach. No, you're right. It's cool, and they're bringing him out to center court. Well, what a great opportunity. It's a family affair. Yep, his parents get to share in the celebration. He gets the basketball. I think his mom caught it on video. Well, we definitely caught it on video. They did, was which is say, good. With a commentary, you know, and uh, and like I said, it's a family affair. And uh, let's take a look at that again. Drive from the left side. Nice job. Goes up and off the window. There it is. Outstanding. Breaks the ice for Quabbin and for himself as well. That's a, a weight off his shoulders. Came in at 999 career points. So Brody Coughlin breaks the 1,000 point plateau for his career. And there's the bleacher creatures. His classmates cheering for him. St. Peter Marion fans actually and parents. Good look at Coach Dextrader. And just another one that uh, Dennis Dextrader has brought along yep. through the system. Well, there's, there's very few that are as good of an ambassador for the game of basketball, the sport of basketball, than Dennis Dextrader. He just loves the sport, loves the game, and, you know, has always been, as long as I've known him, has always been such a great ambassador for the sport of basketball. And so Quabbin closes within two, two on the field goal from Brody Coughlin. C.J. Holmberg in the ball game at this time for St. Peter Marion. Sullivan for Letourneau. Kicks it to Carabin, three from the wing, in and out. Offensive rebound, Letourneau off the back of the iron. Okay. And it's corralled by Coughlin. Right place, right time for Letourneau. Here comes Colby Smith. Smith blocked by Carabin, and he draws the foul. Good job by Colby Smith taking it right at the big man. Well, again, Colby Smith, as soon as he saw daylight in the lane, he just took it hard to the glass. Smith will have one more. He was a, he's a phenomenal running back, but one running back slash receiver. I mean, there was. Most teams thought he was a wide receiver just because he did so well catching the ball, but that was through a lot of hard work in the offseason. He was a running back for Quabbin. He was just a great weapon. So it's a one-point game. Good passing from the Guardians. Uh, Holmberg up and off and the hit. window. Yeah, Holmberg hangs and hits. He's a 6'6 sophomore. Holmberg saves it. Letourneau looks up quickly. Carabin. Carabin stepping through. Beautiful dish. Oh, great Sims. court sets. Shamar Sims. Coughlin comes back quickly. Quabin gets it around the horn, and they'll settle into their half-court offense. They trail it 8-3. to three. Here's Lanfer. Great ball movement by the Panthers. Well, and what they're doing, too, with the players are moving a lot offensively, is they're making the defense move their feet. You want to you want to tire a team out on defense. You don't want them to be able to just kind of stand around and press oh. defensively. Letourneau going right down Main Street for his first points of the ballgame. You know, Bobby Letourneau is only a junior 
Showed a little bit of his speed with the ball in his hand that time. Derek Rowan in the ball game right now for Quabbin. Central Mass High School Sports on Charter TV3 brought to you by the law offices of Joseph J. Cariglia. Joseph J. Cariglia, proud to sponsor high school sports on Charter TV3. 2.18 to play here in the first quarter from Quabbin Regional High School. And we have Kevin Shea, Kevin Wells, Phil Robo, our statistician. We saw Ted Gamula, the former athletic director. Phenomenal guy and did a, just a great job for all of the students and the coaches here at Quabbin for years when he was the athletic director. I had a chance to say hi to him before the ball game and uh, I'll see him. We've got the Clark tournament coming up as uh, you know and uh, our viewing audience knows next week. Great ball movement, nice job. And finished off by Colby Smith who has three points. It's a five point game. But yeah, Ted Gamula is uh, just such a good guy. Oh, good defense. Okay. Popped up in the air, Coughlin has it. Coughlin, five footer on the baseline, no good. Robidoux crashing the glass and he draws the foul. The foul will go Looks on like Shamar Sims. Yep. His first. As Dennis Dextrader sends in a couple new charges, Braden O'Connor and Jim Corzett. Shamar Sims, one of the uh, few seniors, actually, yeah, one of two one seniors two. on the St. Peter Marion team. And this is a Quabbin team that a year ago did not have a senior. Nice take. Yeah, great up fake, Rohan. did a nice job. Karabin back down the other way. That's what St. Peter Marion does so well. They will make you pay for a missed field goal. They run the floor extremely well, now led by the eighth grader Karabin. They pick up man-to-man. -man. Connor going up strong, no good. And it will be Quabbin basketball. Okay, knocked away. Quabbin thought that he got hit from behind. But either way, Quabbin gets the ball. Braden O'Connor will put it in play. He's a 6'1 senior. This is a Quabbin team that didn't have a senior a year ago. Stolen by St. Peter's, stolen back by Quabbin. Lanfer stepping through, Travis Lanfer going to the rack. And a good rebound. Holberg, nice job on the outlet. Alley oh. to Karabin for the finish. Karabin showing you why he is one of the top big men in Central Mass and he is just an eighth grader. Just runs so well. Kobe Smith kicks it to Lanfer, three in the corner. Nothing but net, Travis Lanfer. Well, Quabbin needed that. That was a big time bucket right there. Lanfer is a leader. You watch him in the fall in football. You watch him in basketball. He's a leader. He's a competitor. He's someone who wants the ball in his hand in a clutch situation. Letourneau's three in and out. Smith the rebound. Oh, and you right. can't have enough of those kind of players. Loose ball. Still loose. Picked up by the Guardians, Letourneau. Now there's that pressure. They just come at you and they keep coming at you. So Matt, you've got to keep your head up when you're bringing the ball up the court. Matt Dunphy, number 23. There's Lanfer, no good. Dunphy, a phenomenal football player for St. Peter Marion. He had the steal and got it ahead to Letourneau. Holmberg chasing that one, just couldn't corral it before it went out of bounds. So O'Connor will put it in play, as you see. The coaches, first Marcus Watson, and now Dennis Dextrader. So Quabbin gets the ball back, down by eight. Good battle going on down low. In the paint, back of the iron, and that'll do it for the first quarter. Slow start, but we finished with a flurry. We had Brody Coughlin getting his 1,000th career point, and St. Peter Marion showing you why. They are one of the top teams in Central Mass with that fast break and suffocating defense. After one, the Guardians 16 and the Panthers 8. What's up? I'm Tom and this is Two Things with Tom. Thing number one, Worcester Railers hockey is family fun. Bring the family and have a blast at the DCU Center in Worcester. Thing number two, Worcester Railers hockey is wicked affordable. Railers tickets start at just $15. Enjoy a great night out with your family or friends. 
Hockey is back. Hockey is back in Worcester. Give us a call. Go to RailersHC.com and come see us at the rink. I'm District Attorney Joe Worley, and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. You never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade, take a stand to lend a hand, don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Welcome back everyone as we get set to start the second quarter. Coughlin, the runner on the baseline, no good, and the rebound cleared there by Shamar Dennis. Here's Shamar Sims to the wing. The three is no good, and the rebound by Dennis. SPM has uh, made their bread and butter so far by getting it inside the paint, off the break, or off the drive. They're really struggling from the perimeter right now. St. Peter's shooting 39% from the field in the first quarter, and Quabin at 20. 5%. St. Peter Marion out rebounding Quabbin 11 to 8 and 5 to 2 on the offensive glass. Letourneau doing a great job of getting to the glass. He's so quick with the ball in his hands, he just couldn't finish. Here's Coughlin hemmed in by Dennis. Backcourt violation. Our statistician Phil Robo saw it. He was calling for it. Best in the business, there's Marcus Watson. We saw Dennis Dextrader before. Dennis Dextrader said, we need this game. This is a very, very good test for us, but it's great for us to play a team like St. Peter Marion to get ready for the Clark Tournament, to get ready for the districts. Quabbin's the number one seed in the large school bracket, so next Monday, they will play their first round game of the Clark Tournament. And it is a tough, tough bracket with Shepherd Hill, Westboro to show up. There's a three from Coughlin. Well, it just goes to show you the range that Brody Coughlin has. You know, so you'll see St. Peter's take another step out. They're not going to give him that shot if he's going to start to knock it down like that. They will absolutely defend further out on the perimeter. Samar oh. Dennis from Sims. You know, again, a great job moving the basketball for St. Peter Marion. And it, they go right to the well and they dump it inside. Here's Coughlin, Coughlin tripped up. Well, he gets fouled on his way to the basket, but a nice job. Again, take a look at Coughlin, takes it hard to the basket, you know, and then he gets tripped up going in. That is the fourth team foul on St. Peter Marion. Quabin currently only has one. Seven point advantage for the Guardians. Coughlin. Oh, what a great. In and out. Oh. There's a lid on the hoop right now for this Quabbin team. They're getting great looks, and the ball's bouncing everywhere around the rim except through. Well, you talk about your bounce pass, Kevin. You've been on a roll with that. Great job right there. Coughlin, again, you know, he's like a jet when he takes off and uh, beat his man. Great bounce pass on the inbounds. Just couldn't finish, but a chance to make two. Hits the first. Brody Coughlin, great golfer for this Quabbin school. Coughlin hits them both. Member of the golf team. His favorite food, Buffalo Wings, and his favorite movie is The Legend of Bagger Vance, the golf movie. It's a great movie. Shamar Sims in and out. You know, that's it. You know, again, um, this is what I love about you. You never share all the secrets with me. <laughs> You know what I mean? So I, so keep, I keep some cards close to the best, is that what you're saying? <laughs> nice job taking it to the basket here by St. Peter Mary. Well, Dennis Dextrader, you know, year after year, I, I totally forgot about the fact that he you're gives right. his kids a questionnaire. And, um, you know, so for our viewing audience. Let me put it up on the, in yeah, the mantle you know, there. They're saying, wow, this Shea guy knows so he much does, about these kids. does his homework, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, Dennis gives it to us, but it's really good for everyone to know that. No, you're right, though. It, it, it is because he's doing it to get just more stuff out there for the kids. You know, to get more uh, more info for the kids, to be able to talk more about the kids. 
That one may have been partially blocked from behind. Robidoux. Great position, rebound, and finish. Jake Robidoux with a 6'3 senior. Cuts it to five. Yeah, five point game. So Quabbin weathering the storm here in the first half and answering back. Sullivan in there for St. Peter Marion. Turnover. Good defense. Good defense. Quabbin will the get Panthers. it back. Well, I'll say this too Quabbin will see very good teams in the in the Clark tournament and as I mentioned some of the teams in the large school bracket they won't see a team that can press as well as St. Peter Marion can press missed opportunity for Quabbin here they are off to the races against SPM and they won't see a team that fast breaks as well as St. Peter Marion uh, point well taken I see back in the ball game for St. Peter Marion is Jeff Sullivan. Jeff Sullivan, uh, his grandfather came up to me before the game, and I hadn't seen him in a, a few years. We coached AAU together. Frank Foley, former great player at Holy Cross. Uh, so Jeff Sullivan's got some in his bloodlines and uh, certainly is a good basketball player. Kevin, I think this is a great opportunity since we're staying here. Um, Central Massachusetts and... Uh, the greater Worcester area, especially, uh, lost a uh, we had uh, we lost a tough one, and that was uh, on Friday night this past Friday. Kathy Cushing, the wife of Don Cushing, uh, unfortunately passed away and left us. Uh, Kathy leaves her her daughter Mara Hackinson and her husband Todd, Colleen, her daughter Toll, and her husband Derek, Patricia Espinosa and her husband Tom, and nine grandchildren. Uh, she was a coach, she was a teacher, she was a religious educator for the city of Worcester, and uh, she was certainly the matriarch of the Cushing family. You know, uh, Don Cushing and the tremendous success that he had and continues to have as an educator, as a coach, um, she was part of the foundation behind all of his success. Yeah, Maura, her daughter Mora is a assistant coach with the Shepherd Hill girls basketball team, and her daughters yep. played sports at Worcester State. They were great athletes, uh, and you know, as you said, she was a big reason why John Cushing Coughlin hits a three. A big reason why John Cushing was able to spend all those hours when he was at Bartlett coaching and as the athletic director, um, while she, you know, was the rock raising the kids. No question about it, you know, and three very strong young ladies uh, in the Cushing family. Great finish. Yeah, quick 5 nothing run here from Quabbin, and they've cut it to a two-point game. 22-20, St. Peter Marion with the lead in the ball. Dennis for three. Two Panthers going up for the rebound. Coughlin comes away with it. Coughlin brings it up. Coughlin weaving through traffic. Colby Smith. Travel. Nice call. Break dot. Central Mass High School Basketball and Sports on Charter TV 3 brought to you by the Worcester Railers Hockey Club. The Worcester Railers Hockey Club, proud to sponsor Central Mass High School Sports on Charter TV 3. Quabbin on a 12-6 run, and they've trimmed the lead to two. Oh, Chad, and an offensive foul. It. Beautiful job by Colby Smith. As he takes the charge, Shamar Dennis picks up his second. That's you know, a big foul. Well, and what's interesting is, you know, when you look to to teams that take the charge, again, Kevin, when you talk about coaching, you know, some teams really look to do it a lot. Some teams never do it. But it comes from coaching. It comes from teaching. That's practice in the gymnasium. Yeah. What to do, how to do it, when to do it. Um, and it's great footwork. Nice back door. Lanford to Smith, and he powers it up for two. Smith going right at the taller player, giving away six inches. And we're tied up at 22. And this Quabbin crowd getting behind their Panthers. Garabin for three, long rebound, out of bounds. It'll be Quabbin ball. Well, Quabbin has fought back in this game to tie it up at 22. And as you look at the eighth grader, Alex Karabin. Robin has eight points tonight to lead St. Peter Marion. Here's Coughlin, a deep three for the lead, no good. Oh, what great hustle. Beautiful job, beautiful job by Jake Palmer. 
Palmer, one of those seniors. You know, again, take a look at it. You know, yeah, again, like you said, a senior just going at it hard. He kind of just laid himself out there, and Quabbin gets the ball back. Jake Palmer's going to go into the Marines after graduation. He's a tough kid, and obviously a kid with a lot of courage and a great sense of patriotism. Palmer leading his team on the floor right now. Future Devil Dog. Well blocked, good call. Dribble penetration along the baseline. Palmer's another golfer too. He plays golf as well. His favorite food, a medium rare 18 ounce prime rib. I love it, love it. His lifetime goal is to save a life. Well, he's gonna be doing that going into the Marines, no doubt. The lives of the Americans that he protects. To be able to make that decision as a young man is, uh, you know, is just uh, a great tribute. Travis Lanford gives Quabbin the lead. Panthers by two. Lanford's got seven. 24-22, Quabbin with 2.22 to play in the first half. It's Karabin, nothing doing. The baseline. Quion Sneed draws the foul. Well, nice job going up strong. Quabbin on a 9-0 run, and the Panthers have taken a two-point lead. on Sneed, the junior has two shots and he hits the first. One point game, Sneed with a chance to tie it up. 2.14 to play, he hits them both. So we have a tie ball game. And now here's that trap, that full court pressure, Lanford able to dribble through it. Smith on the corner, Smith to the baseline, penetrates Robidoux. Nice kick out. Three, off the mark. Karabin back down the other way, and a beautiful hustle. Colby Smith knocks it away. Gives it off to Travis Lanford. You know, you talked about Smith's leadership qualities. What great hustle coming from behind and knocking the ball away. And they draw the foul. The foul will go on Sneed. Sneed's still on the floor. Yeah, I think that Sneed got hit. Uh, in the nose, possibly. Let's see, Marcus Watson looking. Now well, here's Sneed. A game Flexing update. his knee. Game update, I just got a score. Putnam Science Academy, 76. The Naval Prep Academy, 56. Wow. Yeah, they hit the ground. Oof. Something with the knee. Lanford yeah, see, I thought he got hit got in the face with that with hand. Sneed. Sneed's one of the leaders, one of the floor generals for this St. Peter Marion team. So the Guardians need him. He pops up. Sneed walking off the court under his own power. That's a good sign. One forty-six to play in the first half. We are tied at 24 all. Cleon Sneed will get looked at on the bench. Hopefully he just banged it. Yeah, important that he keeps it uh, loosened up and not allow it to tighten up on him. So Travis Lanfer at the line, shooting one and one, as that is the seventh team foul on St. Peter Marion. Quabbin's in the bonus. Well, it certainly has lived up to its billing. It's been a great game with 146 to go in a half. Yeah, they're getting some ice for Sneed. Ken Quabin has a uh, trainer on staff here for all the games. Laterno the rebound, quickly gets it up the floor. Ahead of the pack, good up fake. And Jeff Sullivan converts, and St. Peter's has the lead back by two. 135 remaining in the first half. Lanford looking for some help. Robidoux, top of the key. 
Robidoux turn around, knocked away. Uh, and the foul's on Quabbin. Yeah, great, a uh, frustration foul, but a great job by St. Peter Mary in securing the basketball. I think the foul was on Jake Palmer, number 12. He and Robidoux both were tangled up with Carabin. The Guardians with a two-point advantage. In the baseline, inside, Carabin up and in. Four-point lead for St. Peter Marion. Carabin has difficulty height-wise matching up with Carabin once yeah. he gets the ball inside the post, Kevin. He's got 10 points already, Alex Carabin, but yeah, they're not alone. Nice job by Smith coming right back and attacking the glass. I like the way you're attacking the, the basket. I like the aggressive play of the Panthers on offense and another good offensive rebound by St. Peter Marion. They've been sensational in the offensive glass. C.J. Holmberg, a 6'6 sophomore with yeah. the rebound and put back. You know, so they're, I mean, they've got the twin towers in right now. Uh, Carabin and Holmberg, both at 6'6. Six, six. Tough to match up inside the paint with them. Yep. You know, here it is. A miss, but then Holmberg with the putback. Great position rebound. And catch it high, keep yeah. it high. You know, he didn't catch it and put it to the floor, bring it down below his waist, which exactly. coaches always gives him gray hairs. Brody Coughlin hits the front end of the one and one. Well, by the time you reach the varsity level, that's just, it's a fundamental that, uh, you know, it should be innate to your game. It's just something that, uh, like, brushing your teeth every morning. <laughs> you know? Or maybe not. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, 12 points for Coughlin, and that may not be for everyone. Hey. Oh, a deep three in the corner by Sullivan. Oh. Sullivan's got five quick points. Frank Foley. Frank Foley told me, he said, my grandson can really shoot the three. And there it is. So it's a five-point lead for St. Peter Marion. And Take a look at, it. at the line. Again, nice job moving the basketball. It was tied at 24 with 146 to go here in the second period. SPM on a little bit of a run. Coughlin will have one more. You know what I like, and we got to see it in that replay too, with this gym. One of the few, you talk about an old barn. This is like an old barn or a Viking ship. Like the, you don't see this often with the wood, the wooden beams going across, the wooden ceiling. Right, you right. Know, you just don't see that in high schools or colleges. Yeah, they have the arched top. Yeah, you know the arched top. It's all wood. You know, it truly is uh, the old barn. And you say, "Welcome into the old barn." Well, it's a nice facility that they have here. And they have a tremendous sports oh, program here. Go. That's a big three from Karabin here. Late, final 10 seconds of the half. Yep, and he had somebody right in his grill as well. On the run. Oh, nice move. Braden O'Connor at the buzzer on the run with a nice one-hander. And that stops a run from St. Peter Marion. St. Peter's over the final minute making a big run to get some space between. Remember, they trailed it by two. And they were up by seven. And the runner from O'Connor cuts it to five. We've played one half of basketball at the end of one half. It's St. Peter Marion 36 and Quabbin 31. I'm District Attorney Joe Worley, and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. You never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade, take a stand to lend a hand, don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. What's up? I'm Tom and this is Two Things with Tom. Thing number one, Worcester Railers Hockey is family fun. Bring the family and have a blast at the DCU Center in Worcester. Thing number two, Worcester Railers Hockey is wicked affordable. Railers tickets start at just $15. Enjoy a great night out with your family or friends. Hockey is back. Hockey is back in Worcester. Give us a call, go to railershc.com and come see us at the rink. Local sports have a unique way of bringing families together, bringing generations together, bringing neighbors together. In Central Mass, you have families that have been here for years and you have grandparents 
that played at a certain high school and they're watching their grandson or granddaughter play at their same high school. And there's something real special about that. Everyone comes out on a Friday night for football or to support the basketball team or the softball team. And everyone wants to support their team and everyone feels whether or not they have a son or daughter playing or even if they don't know anyone on the roster, they come out because they went to school there or they're from that town. And for us to be able to cover that is really unique, really special and really gratifying. We'll run into people all the time, whether they're home from college or they're visiting family and they don't live in the area anymore. Or they'll say, hey, how's my team doing? You know, how are these guys going to be this year? And so people remember where they came from. They remember their high schools. They remember their playing days. And if you were from here, you know how unique and how special it is that you can get coverage of your high school and your college. We have a bond with uh, the community. They appreciate us. We appreciate them. To hear people cheer for you when you show up because you're just there covering the game we're not the game but it's cool <laughs> I, i've had people tell me that we've brought high school sports to a whole new level in central mass because of the way we cover high school sports and cover them like they're professional athletes local news from central massachusetts for Central Massachusetts. A Webster man is arrested after police say he stole numerous manhole covers. At least eight cars caught fire tonight at a parking garage. If you hear the same noise in the future, the town says you should evacuate the area. Reporters in the field. And an in-depth local forecast. Worcester News Tonight on Charter TV 3. Welcome back, everyone. We are at the half. St. Peter, Marion, and Quabbin. St. Peter's in front 36 to 31. Kevin Shea alongside of Kevin Wells. And Kevin, this was a game. Quabbin led by two late in that half. And then St. Peter showed why they are such a talented team because they can take a game and in 15 seconds they can completely flip it. And that's what they did. With a quick run there during a 15 20 second period, uh, went up by seven. And then Quabbin hit the late one to make it a five point game here at the half. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, St. Peter Marion really struggled shooting the three in the uh, in the first half. Oh, big basket here and uh, quite, uh, quite a kids. bit of excitement. Yep, one of the kids at the half here. So uh, St. Peter Marion did struggle shooting the basketball. They were out like uh, racehorses. They ran the fast break very well. They got the majority of their points inside. 146 to go. It's tied 24-24 in the half. And then all of a sudden, SPM decides that they're going to start to make some shots. So they hit a couple key threes. They got the ball inside again. Um, you know, they're just, they're a tough, tough opponent. Now, in terms of Quabbin, I don't know if this has impressed you or not, but just the way they've dealt with the pressure. And this is a team that Dennis Dexter said, we don't have a true point guard. I thought they handled the pressure pretty well and the press pretty well. And even in terms of dealing with the length, as you mentioned, the Twin Towers and their two 6'6 players, uh, where Quabbin's tallest is 6'3", and there's only one on the roster with 6'3", so it's, you know, we talked to you and I have said this, body first, ball second. You gotta box out, but you gotta get into the body. It can't be just try to take space because the 6'6 six, six kid's gonna reach right over you if you're 5'11", 5'10". Absolutely, I used to say you've gotta box away, not box out. It's right. not a matter of making contact. You've really gotta get a body and kind of shuffle the person away from the basket, so forcing them to come over your back. Uh, but again, you know, I was really, really impressed, and this goes back to coaching and Dennis Dextrader. Uh Quabbin had the opportunity to kind of rush things if they wanted to, to force passes, but they were deliberate. They were patient. They ran their offense. You know, they were down by, uh, I think they were down by eight at one time early, and they just kept sticking to it and running their offense and doing their sets, sharing the basketball, and that, in fact, paid off for them got themselves back into it. So guaranteed in the second half, Dennis is making some adjustments and you'll see the same type of exact thing. Now you've coached uh, teams at the Clark Tournament before. Playing a game like this and playing a team like this just a couple days before the Clark Tournament, how beneficial is this? Or is it, how much of a risk is it? Because say you get blown out, what does it do to the confidence of the team? Well, I mean, the bottom line is this, everything in perspective. You know, uh, everybody talks about Bill Belichick and why is Brady, they're up by 30 and Brady's still in the ball game. Right. You know, you talk about risks. What if someone gets hurt in a game like this? You know what? You play your games and you play to win. But the game itself, preparing for the Clark tournament, for Coabin, playing against St. Peter Mary, what a great idea. What a great opportunity. 
You know, St. Pete's is really tough. It's also a great game for St. Peter Marion. You know, Quabbin, let's let's remember, three losses. They're 12-3, right. oh, yeah. so it's not no, like they're, they're a slouch. good team, and this is a tough place to play. Right. So uh, Marcus Watson wanted them to be exposed to that, too. So, again, second half, anything can happen. Herb Brooks, the 1980 Olympic hockey team, he scheduled a game with the Russians three days before the Olympic tourney began. They lost that game, but they won it when it counted. We're at the half, 36-31, St. Peter Marion. What's up? I'm Tom, and this is Two Things with Tom. Thing number one, Worcester Railers hockey is family fun. Bring the family and have a blast at the DCU Center in Worcester. Thing number two, Worcester Railers hockey is wicked affordable. Railers tickets start at just $15. Enjoy a great night out with your family or friends. Hockey is back. Hockey is back in Worcester. Give us a call, go to railershc.com and come see us at the rink. I'm District Attorney Joe Worley, and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. You never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade, take a stand to lend a hand, don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Local news from Central Massachusetts for Central Massachusetts. A Webster man is arrested after police say he stole numerous manhole covers. At least eight cars caught fire tonight at a parking garage. If you hear the same noise in the future, the town says you should evacuate the area. Reporters in the field. And an in-depth local forecast. Worcester News Tonight on Charter TV 3. We're proud to lead with high school sports stories because we know that's important to our viewers, that's important to our communities. I think it's incredibly unique because you just don't see this amount of coverage other places. We can do five and six minutes at 10 o'clock, whereas other stations might do two and a half minutes, and of that, 30 seconds is on high school sports. It's very easy to be enthusiastic watching these guys play, whether it's high school football or field hockey or lacrosse. When you see somebody make an outstanding play, you're kind of fired up about that. I come back and I'm like, Kev, I, I couldn't believe this play I saw in this game. And to see and to kind of be able to capture some of those magic moments when you're there to witness history, that's really cool. We're out there every day shooting the games ourselves and coming back and editing it and writing it ourselves. You get a certain insight that you don't get if you're, say, in a press box. We never forget the players that come from Central Mass, those that are lucky enough to play professional sports. We follow them in the pros. We never forget those guys coming from Central Mass. I've had people come up and say to me that, you know, we still watch and we're still fans because they can watch on TV. Has it brought fans to the game? Has it impacted local sports? I hope so. Coaches tell us it has. Certainly our goal is just to, just to cover the game and to really highlight the positive of, of high school and, and local college sports. And we're enjoying what we do, and that I hope that comes across. There's no other place I'd rather be, and there's no other job I'd rather do. All right, welcome back. Here are some of our first half highlights. Robin, the big fella for St. Peter's with the block and working hard on the offensive glass to put back for him. Yeah, good look at his length. You know, there's the thousand point scorer right there and that was the basket. Great penetration to the basket and nice strong move off the window. Quavin showing a little bit of their range there. Again. Yeah, for with the three. Nice bucket, good score. Sullivan, that's your guy Sullivan with the hoop. Yeah. And there it is, the Panther and the Bleacher Creatures behind him. Some first half statistics as we begin the third quarter. Each team shot 41% from the field. Karabin with a three to start it off. Well, he for was St. Peter Marion. Well behind the arc, big bucket there. You know what's impressive to me is that he he has no fear to shoot the basketball. I mean, he has tremendous confidence. You know, and, right. and again, it's really atypical. Smith blocked. Again, tough to go up there for Robin. And the pull-up jumper, Shamar Dennis. Well, Shamar is uh, one of the leaders of this team. 
Smith. And Shamar Sims poked it away from behind. Here's Dennis with the step through. Well, Shamar Dennis. Timeout, Quabbin. As St. Peter Marion opening up the half on a 7-0 run. And it's a 43-31 lead. Well, here's that smothering defense. St. Peter's from behind. They knock it away. Then they're off and running. And here's that nice step-through move. Little finger roll for the finish. 43-31. Just about seven minutes to go here in the beginning of the third quarter. There's Marcus Watson talking to his team. So here's some numbers again from the first half. Quabbin with 17 rebounds. St. Peter's with eight. St. Peter's seven offensive rebounds. Quabbin with five. Ten turnovers for the Panthers. Eight for the Guardians. Seven points off of turnovers for Quabbin and six points off of turnovers for St. Peter's. So very even statistically in the first half as Phil Robo does so well every game. Telling the game story through the numbers. Quabbin gets the basketball here. Here's Brody Coughlin, got his 1,000th career point earlier in the game. Coughlin underneath to Robidoux. Robidoux picked off by Carabin, and St. Peter's will run. Quabbin gets back quickly. Laterno knocked away by Smith. Good anticipation from Colby Smith. Smith wants to be an NFL football player someday. Well. Wants to play Division I college football. He's a phenomenal football player. He's on his way to be built like an NFL yeah, I was player. Say, you can see that he trains a lot. Works hard in the weight room. The three off the mark. Smith battles for the rebound. Shamar Sims underneath to Karabin. Nice rebound by Sims and a good feed. Yeah, great feed. Bounce pass from one block to the other. Karabin with the finish. Knocked around. Grabbed by Lanford. Stolen. Stolen. Here comes. Sims, or Dennis rather to Sims. Sims with the finish. Well, and this nice is what job. we talked about at the half, that you know, in a 15, 20 second period, St. Peter's can completely turn a game. And that's what they've done here just in this second half. Look at the second half, we're less than two minutes in to the second half and they, they're on an 11 nothing run. Another timeout. We'll take a timeout as well when we'll be back with more from Quabbin Regional High School. If you feel like you're getting knocked around by the big insurance company, call the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Whether it's a car accident, slip and fall, or dog bite, don't sign anything from the insurance company until you've talked to a lawyer. Hiring a lawyer can double or even triple the initial settlement offer. Don't stand alone against the big insurance companies. Let the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia fight for you. All right, here's that last bucket now. The last four field goals for St. Peter Marion have come off of turnovers. So the last eight points have come off of turnovers. And this is what we talked about. This is a team that can just score in bunches, score in a hurry, and they can flat out ambush you with the great defense that they play, that full court defense, and they can turn a, a tight game into a double digit lead in a matter of a minute. Well, you saw some of the quickness and the length on Shamar Dennis. Um, he's very athletic, he's long, and he's very, very quick. And St. Peter's being patient, running their offense. Letourneau's step back jumper short. Coughlin the rebound, he looked up at Smith, but Nice job by Sullivan getting back defensively for St. Peter's to mark him. Here's Lanfer. Lanfer on a give and go with Robidoux. Lanfer hits the ground hard as he is shaking really? up. Lanfer hit hard. He went down on his back and, then I and think the back of his head. Right. You wonder if he got, hopefully it was just the wind knocked out of him. He lost his footing as they both grabbed the ball on the rebound. Let's take a look at it here. He goes up, and you can see yeah, his see left leg upper. almost got caught under yeah. him. Yeah. Here's like, Smith. Well, Smith, they were overplaying and a great job. Very wise move with the backdoor cut. Outstanding pass. Colby Smith. 
crowd trying to get Quabbin back into the ball game. And a beautiful offensive rebound and put back. Shamar Dennis, high flying down the lane. Yeah, we talked about, I just got through saying, he's very athletic, very strong and long. And uh, that was a good look at the type of damage that he could do. Look at Smith going strong to the rack, and he draws the foul. Colby Smith just attacking the basket, taking it right to the defense. I'm going to tell you right now, you know, we you are not going to see many players step in and draw a charge no. against Colby Smith. No. And I think he I think he knows that too. He gets a, a head of steam, man. He, yeah, I would not be stepping in and take a charge from him, even with a full suit of armor. Absolutely. And you're absolutely right. He does know that. You know, and that uh, that's an emotional weapon. Yeah, he's got know? ten points tonight, but you think of how he's going to be. I mean, he was a stud last year on the football field. Now you give him another year of lifting and growing and physically maturing. He is going to be an absolute beast for Dave Buchanan and this Quabbin football team next year. Beautiful passing from St. Peter Marion. Quick touches, Dennis to Sims. Uh, just a great feed. You know, he saw the lane. He went hard into it. Weak side collapsed. Uh, to help out, and then they ended up making a great pass into the low post. I mean, just great ball movement. Take a look at it here. There's the lane he saw, and oh. then just a little push pass. There's the kick out, Carabas, penetration, off the window. Good left-handed finish. Just very, very basic basketball. Great job by St. Peter's. Dennis drew four players. When you looked at that replay, four players were drawn to Shamar Dennis. That's great basketball. Here's Lanfer. Send it around. Korzik, he's a golf player as well. Golf won their league championship. A lot of golfers on this team. And Braden O'Connor's one of them, and he's guarding Karabin right now. Big steal there by Karabin. Letourneau knocked away by Lanfer. Marcus Watson shouting out instructions for his team as Bobby Letourneau will put it in play for the Guardians. Karabin, leaner, in and out. You know, again, uh, wise beyond his years, takes it off the bounce into the lane, and he puts his left shoulder into it. Uh, Kevin doing a great job of protecting the basketball, but more importantly, he had the defensive player moving his feet, so he was anticipating the potentiality of a three, looking for contact. Karabin having a, his usual typical big night for St. Peter Marion. Geez, I didn't even ask you. Uh, I, I talked to a wardrobe specialist yesterday, and he, he said to me, he suggested that I wear a blue blazer, white shirt, with a, uh, a multicolored blue stripe tie. Nice move Open and a great seal. So I know you spend a lot of time with makeup before the games, and I it's do. important. I think that's important. But I wanted to look fly tonight, so <laughs> I, I went right to uh, my wardrobe specialist. And <laughs> you've done well. Your wardrobe specialist has done well by you tonight. That's it. He said something about stripes maybe look thinner. I think he was trying to make me feel good. <laughs> But uh, that's okay. 20 points for Karabin. 20 point that's differential great. right now. You're gonna show up in a striped uh, blazer well, for the Clark tournament. He, he, I don't know if my wife would let me walk out <laughs> of the house like that. No, you're right, she absolutely wouldn't. Central uh, Mass High School basketball on Charter TV3 brought to you by the Worcester Railers Hockey Club. The Worcester Railers Hockey Club proud to support Central Mass Sports on Charter TV3. For tickets and more information, you can call the Worcester Railers box office or look them up online. So There's, look at these pictures. Look at Dennis Dextrader going back in time. Right. 1985, look at this. Oh boy, I'll tell you. That's that, outstanding. That's prime time. And there he is. Look oh. at Dex in the yearbook. Yeah. Oh, this is outstanding. An, an anonymous source 
uh, hung these up for us tonight. Look at Dex, he's got the Frisbees. More like he's hung got him the, out to dry. Oh yeah, he's, he's got the must rock and the mustache. He was basically the Tom Selleck, the Magnum PI of, uh, of Quabbin Regional High School. Well, he certainly enjoyed a great career here. And uh, because of his love of the game, now that he's retired, he's not retired from basketball. So uh, that's a good look. Um, well, and he's coached it for years. He, he had the thing with the uh, the Colonials where he would take a team, a kids group of kids from yep. Central Mass and go play in Europe in the summertime. And then he would get the teams from Europe to come here and play in Central Massachusetts. And, you know, just a, a, the experience that he gave to a lot of kids in Central Mass, being able to travel overseas and, and see and be part of the European culture while they, because it wasn't just about basketball, it was about learning and opening their eyes and seeing different countries and different cultures. Uh, and then when the kids came here and interacting with them and hanging out with them and just learning a lot more than just basketball. No, absolutely. And, uh, you know, and again, you know, he explored, he researched, he sought out opportunities, and, and that was just one of the opportunities that he was able to take, you know, some kids uh, from this neck of the woods and from all over Central Mass and give them that wonderful, wonderful life-changing opportunity. Here's oh. Cleon Sneed. Sneed was hurt in the first half, and it's an offensive foul. Well, he took it hard to the basket, and you got to give credit uh, Jake Palmer, take yeah. a look at it. He just steps in. Wow. He, yeah. Full steam ahead. He took that charge. Second on Sneed. Jim Corsick in the game again for St. Peter Marion. Kyle Skerry on the court right now for St. Peter's. Korzik, part of that I mean, uh, league championship golf team for Quabbin. Does not like the Cleveland Cavaliers. That's his dislike. So a lot of Celtics fans feel that way. Here's Smith up top. Under three minutes to play, third quarter. Coughlin inside the arc, in and out. St. Peter Marion quickly up the floor. Dunphy. Swing it around, Karabin down low, and Sims on the finish. Samar Sim, Shamar Sims has 12 points. Nice pass into the low post. Again, doing a great job of sharing the basketball. I don't think it was touched, so that'll be a turnover. St. Peter Marion will get the basketball. St. Peter Marion on a 23 to four run. This was a five point game at the half. 36-31. In the final minute, it was a tie ball game. St. Peter's has exploded. Cody Smith in the ball game for St. Peter Marion. Good dish down low from Sims. Or make it Dennis, rather, to Karabin. Great pass. Troy Jenkins with his first field goal of the night, the 6'3 sophomore for the Panthers. Nice job by Jenkins getting up the floor. Again, Bobby Letourneau with a great pass. There's Smith from the corner, nothing but net on the three. Cody Smith with a triple. Smith, a good baseball player for the St. Peter Marion squad. Here comes Sims. Sims on the run to Dennis. Dennis tried to go back to Sims. Loose ball. Still loose. Sims up and in. Uh, offense by accident. Sims has 14 points. Ball bounced around a little bit there, and St. Peter's got a break, was able to pick it up and score the basketball. 64-37, St. Peter Marion in front of Quabbin. Again, this was a 36-31 game at the half. Kevin Shea with Kevin Wells and Phil Robo. Thank you for joining us tonight for great Central Mass High School basketball. Owen Leary checking in the ball game for St. Peter Marion, the six foot junior. Tremendous football player for the Guardians. And St. Pete is extending their pressure. 
Running the double teams on the perimeter. Robidoux powers up for two. Jake Robidoux, the senior, doing a nice job of waiting for the defender to leave his feet and then going up off the window. St. Peter Marion with the ball in the lead. Leary will send it around the horn. Both of Leary's parents went to the Naval Academy. He had a sister that's at the Naval Academy. Leary. Here's Smith for three. Leary bats it around, and Colby Smith has it. Colby Smith knocked away by Dennis. Oh, nice save. Up and in. Great finish. Matt Dunphy picks up his first two of the ball game, and a foul called on Smith. Colby Smith. Cody Smith, rather. Uh, what a save going out of bounds. He had his tip from behind, and then he turns around and throws it behind his back. Just a great, great save. Shamar Dennis. Another good look at it. St. Peter Marin relentless with the pressure. 21.6. Match up full court man to man. There's Korzik. Now they get it to Lanford to try to break the press. Dunphy guarding him. Here's Lanford. Lanford, tremendous competitor, great leader. Lanford, couple up fakes, and he draws the foul. Leary picks up the foul, his first. Owen Leary's grandfather, legendary Acton Boxborough football coach. Phenomenal coach, phenomenal person. Good look right there of Travis as he took it along the baseline. Nice shot fake, got the defenders off of their feet that went up strong. Lanford will have one more. In and out, Robidoux the offensive rebound and put back. Nice job at the buzzer. Robidoux just kept himself in a position to get that rebound. Great finish. So at the end of three, it's St. Peter Marion 66, Quabbin 42. We're back with more right after this. What's up? I'm Tom, and this is Two Things with Tom. Thing number one, Worcester Railers hockey is family fun. Bring the family and have a blast at the DCU Center in Worcester. Thing number two, Worcester Railers hockey is wicked affordable. Railers tickets start at just $15. Enjoy a great night out with your family or friends. Hockey is back. Hockey is back in Worcester. Give us a call, go to railershc.com and come see us at the rink. I'm District Attorney Joe Worley, and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here is our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. You never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and their communities. Join the anti-bully crusade, take a stand to lend a hand, don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Central Mass High School Basketball on Charter TV3 brought to you by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Joseph J. Coriglia, proud to sponsor Central Mass High School Sports on Charter TV3. St. Peter Marion scored 36 points total in the first half. They scored 30 in the third quarter. As they outscored Quabbin 30 to 11 in that quarter. But there's a lot of time left. Uh, eight minutes here in the fourth quarter. And you never know, it's high school basketball. That's true. Nice drive to the basket, an outstanding finish. Matt Dunphy doing a nice job getting in the, the teeth, the grit of the defense. Here's Leary on the wing. Leary and Letourneau. Letourneau kicks it out. Dunphy Travel. stepping through and he traveled. Yeah. Some happy feet there, but uh, attempted a two-step stop. On the wing. Coughlin. No good. Leary the rebound. Letourno goes to the corner. The three ball from Dunphy, no good. And here comes Korzik. Jenkins. Not a bad look by Jenkins. 
Up ahead, Leary tried to dish it backwards to Holmberg. 66-44, fourth quarter, St. Peter Marion in front of Quabbin. Kevin Shea with Kevin Wells and Phil Robo. Thanks for joining us tonight for the Central Mass basketball. Coughlin, left-hander, no good. Leary swats it away. Now Six back and a half to, to play. Back-to-back -back opportunities right there for Quabbin to score a couple quick baskets. Colby Smith, Robidoux, and they go to the floor for it. Holmberg doing Still a great loose. job. Still loose, and a jump ball. Holmberg defending from the backside, doing a nice job of knocking the ball away, and then they get a tie-up. Possession, Quabbin. Smith. He's just so strong. Yeah, he is. And he just willed his way strength-wise right into the paint. Six minutes to play, 66-44. St. Peter's in front, Laterno with a three. Nice. Laterno has got seven points. Back down the other way, it's Jim Korzik. Korzik's got four for Quabbin. Again, nice job by Korzik. Second time he's taken, taken it right into the teeth of the defense and gone up strong. Leary on the corner. Laterno the runner, short. Korzik the rebound, he'll push. Korzik on the run, looked at the three. Here's Robidu, puts it to the floor, and he draws the foul. Well, he'll shoot two. So if the pace of the game stays where it is right now, uh, what I can tell you is that for this Quabbin team and Dennis Dextrader, as they prepare for the Clark tournament, most assuredly, this will be a building block for them and a wake-up call that they're gonna have to care for the basketball more, they're going to have to do a better job of boxing out, and they're going to have to be ready to play because Probably the most formidable opponent in the Clark for them will be the Rams of Shepherd Hill yes. that we saw knock off Algonquin. Yeah, and they play them this Thursday. Oh, there you go. So that is a lot like uh, that could the be U.S. A... team playing Russia three days before the tournament. Yeah. In 1980, they lost that one like 10 to three, but then they came back and they beat them when it mattered. That 1980 Miracle on Ice team. And that's Cody Smith. The freshman, he's got five points. Good reverse layup by Lanfer. So the eighth grader, Alex Karabin, our producer director, Sean Grady, says, could he be the best eighth grade basketball player since Matt Brochu at Nipmuc, who went on to play at Assumption College? Uh, I think he's favoring Nipmuc because he's an alumni, to be honest with you. But well, he's Marion. He's from Upton, but he went to Marion High School. Oh, He's oh, a Mustang. Oh. On the run, out of bounds. You know, in girls basketball, obviously the O'Keefe girls uh, played as eighth graders at Quabbin, at Quabog, rather, and they were phenomenal. Well, going way back, you had Kyla Barubi. That's right. At Oxford. And how about what she's done at Tufts? You know, I mean, the Tufts team, one of the top teams in the country now, year in and year out. She's Carla great recruiter. Barubi has you done know. a phenomenal job. Yeah. All character kids, you know, it's a great school, and uh, she's done a great job coaching that team. You see the two huddles. Look at Quab in there. Over. There's Sean Leary in the upper left on the phone, Owen Leary's dad. Sean's a former quarterback at Acton Box Pro. Went to the Naval Academy. Here's a good look. Sitting right inside the huddle. Yep. Right now, He's going But there's, uh, you know, Marcus Watson's a guy, he loves basketball as well. He coaches at the AAU level. And he's a guy that just is in a gym year round. 
yeah. he's in and he's teaching the game. You know, and, and again, I think, you know, one of the important things is that, you know, he, like Dennis, are just quality human beings. That, yep. You know, as a parent, you would be comfortable and people are comfortable having their child play for him because it's more than just a bounce of a ball. Dave Bulldog, great to have him on the handheld camera. He was the one giving us the shot right inside that huddle. A wise man once said, a master at his craft makes a noticeable difference. He's outstanding. So now St. Peter Marion has gone to their bench a little bit. Some Aaron. new players in there. Aaron Fano. Fano. And Coughlin. Nice bucket. Brody Coughlin, again, one of his strengths is his ability to get to the basket. Did a nice job there, up and off of the window. 15 points for Brody Coughlin tonight, including his 1,000th career point. Nice job defensively by the Panthers. I'll tell you what, Lanfer, if, if Assumption gets Lanfer as a football player, they are going to be excited. They are going to be very happy that they got him as a leader, as a competitor. He's a guy, too, and Dave Buchanan was talking about it before the game that worked on just route running. No quarterback, no one throwing him the basket, the football, would just go out and work on just straight running pass routes. In the offseason, by himself, after practice, you don't see that. Two forty-seven to play in the game. Seventy-one fifty. St. Peter Marion in front. Phil Robo has ripped the stat sheet in half. That's his way of saying, "Turn out the lights. The party's over." <laughs> they say all good things must end. Turn out the lights. The party's over, and tomorrow we'll do it all over again. Thanks. Smith with another three. Cody Smith, an outstanding two-sport athlete. He's basketball and baseball. He's got eight points tonight. I just got a text from your wife. She said, thank God <laughs> that he has a real job. Not going to cut it as a singer. So I don't know about tomorrow. I, I guess that means that you shouldn't be singing or any love songs on <laughs> Valentine's Day. <laughs> Might break the, break the windows in the house. Leary. To the wing and off the mark. Smith the rebound. That was Fana. Final 143 of play. Leary with the steal. He'll bring it up. Derek Rohan getting back defensively for Quabbin. St. Peter's running their offensive set. One twenty to play in the game. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Leary for three. The rebound cleared there by Kyle Scary. And we got a timeout with one ten to play. Phil Robo swan song with us this season. What are we going to do? Are you going to be with us in the football? You are with us for this next football season. Most of it. But this is it. We're going to have to get gotta get like a rocking chair, a Channel 3 rocking chair, something like that. We need the tour, the victory tour. Where people bring out the gifts for Phil Robo. He has been so good. I think for the Clark so tournament, it probably would I think be you're appropriate right. that oh, yeah. he puts on a suit coat and tie. Well, at least for one of the games. You know? One of the games when we can interview him. I interview that him way, at halftime. When we talk about the pride and class of Central Mass, yeah. there's his picture. Lester Lyon. There's his Phil's picture. Phil's done a ton for That's right. the town and the community of Lester on the Lions Club and was the, the president of the Lions Club. Did he happen to marry you? The Grand Chai. Yeah, so we, I was going to say we'd talk about that during our interview with him, but he married me and my wife Katie he married you and your wife Patty I mean you talk about a guy who has had a 
a huge hand in helping us on and off the court. And he married Jason Snell, who's part of our production team. Talk about a family affair. I know. I'll tell you. He really is our go-to guy. He is. Oh, he completely is. He's carried us on and off the court for years. Big bucket right there. Nice shot. Showing a little bit of range. Braden O'Connor. Jason Snell was renewing his vows. He's great. Phil is fantastic. St. Peter Marion holding on to the ball. Final 30 seconds. Eight on the shot clock. As the Guardians will hold. Try to hoist one here, maybe at the buzzer, maybe not. Nope, they're going to hold it. Turn it over. You know, that's just the class, though, of Marcus Watson. That's who, that's who he is right there. Right. Said, hold the ball, don't take a shot. Just hold it. And you have to understand. We'll just take the final 30 seconds. Some of these kids in. didn't get a lot of minutes for St. Right. Peter Mary, and, and, and they want to score. They oh, yeah. want to push. They want to play. Right. Well, they're all working hard in practice right. and going up against the starters and giving them a good look and battling with them, but that's just... That's a class act by Marcus Watson. St. Peter's has it. Smith will hold on to it. And the Guardians will walk out with a hard-fought victory. Score not really indicative of how close this one was. It was a five-point game at the half. St. Peter Marion, the winner, 74-53. As they get ready for postseason, and Quabbin Gets ready for the Clark Tournament. Tomorrow night, we will have NCAA basketball for you. The Holy Cross women's team taking on the Cadets of West Point. That's tomorrow live from the Hart Center at 7 p.m. For our director and producer, Sean Grady, statistician Phil Robo, Kevin Wells, and our entire crew, thanks for watching everyone tonight. So long from Quabbin Regional High School, where Marcus Watson and St. Peter Marion victorious 74-53.